that I do have a, 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 a this is, the sermon is called The Well of Endurance, but if I can have a subtitle, it would be whatever the enemy throws at you, keep digging. Keep digging. Over the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about the wells of Isaac, everything he had to dig in Genesis 26. You can go ahead and just turn to Genesis 26. If you have not been here, the messages are available. Please make sure you catch up. But I'm going to preach this thing like, like you hadn't been here. Amen? So, Genesis 26. Has a strange setting here. Famine has hit the promised land of God. Makes no sense. This is supposed to be the land that God promised. This is supposed to be the land that everything's supposed to work out okay. The promised land is supposed to be the land of milk and honey, Brother Tony. This is where everything's supposed to be all right. This is the promises of the Lord, and I'm, and I'm, I'm literally in it. Genesis 26, it sets the tone that they're in the promised land. But the first line says, famine hit the promised land. It's wild. Now all of a sudden, there's malnutrition in the land. Now all of a sudden, the land isn't as fruitful as it's supposed to be, like God said. All of a sudden, people are dying and getting sick. This is the land that God promised. This is the land that God promised Abraham. You're going to have a land, and I'm going to fulfill my promises. This is where my people will be blessed. And all of a sudden, Genesis 26, there's a big turn where it says there's famine. They hit the land. Now there's a drought. Now they can't find water. Now everybody wants to move. Wait a minute. But isn't this the land that God brought us to? And everyone's like, well, this can't be. We should just go to Egypt. Oh, the people of God, that was, a, that was a constant complaint. We should just go to Egypt. Can you imagine being in the promises of God and all of a sudden things get crazy? But that lets us know that you can be in the will of God, doing exactly what God called you to do, fulfilling out God's promises, and still experience drought. And still experience chaos. Just because you're in the promises of God doesn't mean that stuff won't happen to you. Just because you're in the promises of God doesn't mean you won't be attacked. Just because you're actually reading and you're going to church and, 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 and you have a community of people around you that love Jesus doesn't mean that, they, that you're not on the enemy's radar. Does it, it doesn't mean that things won't happen. I've been there. I'm in the will of God, but God, I'm experiencing drama. I'm in the will of God, but people talking about me. I'm in the will of God, but things ain't going the way I want them to go. You hear what I said? The way I want them to go. I'm in the will of God, but thing, everywhere I turn, I'm dealing with issues. If it ain't with my family, it's with my friends. If it ain't with my church, it's with my job. Everywhere I go, but I'm, I'm supposed to be in the promises of God. Why? Lord, why? Have you ever been there? Somebody said, I am there. <laughs> I mean, I didn't want you to repeat it, but somebody actually said that. <laughs> yeah, come on, come on. It's a real place to be. That's why I love the word, because the word will bring it right to your reality. Right to your reality. And I believe in this chapter, that's what Isaac was saying. He said, man, Isaac was like, dude, I found out real quickly that you could be in the will of God and still experience drama, craziness, trials, tribulation. All these things can still happen right when you're chasing God's promise. Still attack. God, you're supposed to protect me here. Still attack. Weapon formed against me shall prosper. The weapons show enough forming. Usually when we find ourselves in this place, we give up. Say, God, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Tell me. Tell 
done with this. I know what you promised me, but I'm done. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with the people. I don't want to deal with her, him. Done. I don't want to deal with the church. I'm done. God, why, did you, why did you allow this to happen to me? I'm, I'm done. You know what? I'd rather do something else. You really want me, then find me over here. You ever, have you ever said that? Honest people. Honest believers. Come on, you, we got to stop acting like we got it all together. I mean, one person that say they got it all together, you'll find a lie. God's doing a work on all of us. But th here's the thing what people forget that Jesus actually said in John, once, in John 16, 33, King James Version, he says, in this world, you will have tribulation. Why did he say that? In this world, there's a, there's a reason why he worded it this way, Brother Tony. In this world, because you're in the world, but you're not of it. You're in the world, but you're not of it. Meaning, you may not be of the world, but you're going to have to deal with everything the world going to throw at you. I've put you in the fire. You may not burn, but I've put you in it. He says, in this world, you're going to deal with people. You're going to deal with drama. You're going to deal with financial issues. He says, but watch this. He says, but take heart, for I've overcome the world. What did he mean? Jesus was trying to encourage you. There will be things that happen in, in your life that you don't like. They will make you uncomfortable. They may cause hurt. They may cause pain. But Jesus was saying, but don't give up. Don't give in. Don't throw in the towel. Don't throw in the towel. Just keep digging. Just keep sowing. Just keep serving. Just keep digging. Just keep sowing. And just keep serving. Because God is saying, Jesus was trying to tell him, because I'm not done with you yet. There's so much more to your story that you don't understand. I just need you to stay in the course. Stay on, stay on the course. Don't give up. Don't fall off the path. And I'll take care of you. That's what Jesus was saying. He said, you're going to have to go through some stuff. Look at somebody and tell them, you're going to have to go through some things. He says, but take heart. Ooh. But take heart. I have overcome the world. What does that mean? There's another scripture that aligns with that. Hide this word in your heart. Keep it right here. It says, take heart. Keep real close to you. Right here, don't let anybody mess that up. You keep it right there. That God said, I'm going to take care of you. I've already defeated the enemy. You're my own. And because you're mine, he can't win against you. Somebody needed to hear that today. He can't win. He can't win. He's already been declared a loser. Seeing a Mike Tyson fight, and Jesus is already like, I already know who's going to win. I am. I already know who's going to win. We're just going to watch the fight and let it play out. This TiVo for me. I'm trying to tell you I've already seen the outcome. But I just need you to stay the course. Just keep digging. Just keep sowing. Just keep digging. Just keep sowing. Because the ruler of the universe says, I got your back. The one who created all things says, I'm here with you. I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. Every punch he throws, I'll block it. Everything that he does, I'll, it's, he's not going to succeed. You win every time. Somebody say hallelujah. So that's what was going on in Genesis. That was the issue here. Isaac was had, faced with the issue of, I'm in the promised land. Oh, but I'm going through a few things here. I don't like how it feels. I feel real uncomfortable. None of this seems to make sense to me. And then the Lord spoke to Isaac. Genesis 12, he said, Isaac. 26, he said, Isaac, I, you can't give up. You can't leave here. Don't leave the land. Because Isaac wanted to go. He was just like us. I want to go. I want to leave. I, wanna, I want to go to Egypt. Water there, there's food there, that's where I want to go. And Isaac is like, and the Lord stops Isaac and says, Listen, Isaac, you can't leave. And then he promises him, he promises him this. He says, If you stay in the land, I will bless you. And I will be with you. Crazy thing about it is he already knew that that's the type of God God was. 
but he was so caught up and distracted by what was going on. It wasn't a new, it wasn't new information to him. It was, it, was, it was a reminder. You stay. You keep digging. You keep sowing, and I'm going to bless you. So Isaac cleaned it up real quick. Verse 12 says, so Isaac stayed in the land. Then he sowed in the land. Within the year, he received a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. So he didn't just receive a hundredfold. It says, and. And he had just unlimited favor upon his life. God responded to Isaac's uncomfortable yes. A lot of us, God is just calling for you to give him an uncomfortable yes. Well, I don't like what's going on, but yes, Lord. Makes no sense to me. Yes, Lord. Your will be done. I'm here for it. This whole chapter was letting you know it's okay to have an uncomfortable yes. It's okay to, to give a painful yes. Every yes, listen to me, every yes doesn't have joy connected to it. Every yes doesn't have joy connected to it. Every yes isn't the most exciting yes. Can you imagine Jesus on the cross? <sighs> yes, Lord. You don't know what they do. Give them in pain, it hurts. <sighs> he even lets you know, like, oh, this is hard. This is hard for me. But forgive them, God. They know not what they do. That's, oh, that's a painful yes. That's, that's, that's a faithful yes. That's a, oh, God, I don't, ooh, I don't like it, but I trust you. Where are those that, that, that have that right now? I don't like this, but I trust you, Father. But I, I, I trust you. I'm not going to give up on you. And God responded to that. And he, God blessed them. But then, but then here's what's crazy. You would think things were great after that, after God blessed them, and he, he received a hundredfold, and he had to deal with more drama. He had to deal with more issues. This is Isaac. The people of the town became jealous of him. The king stopped liking him. So they responded in such a shady way. Said, Listen, you ain't about to come up around here. It's not what we want. So they filled up the wells that he dug. They filled up the wells and then they kicked him out. Kicked him out the town. Imagine, man, God just blessed me. Man, things are going good. We back on the right track. And face with drama again. Now your friends talking about you. The ones you call family, casting you aside. But wait a minute, God, I thought, th I thought things were going good. I thought you were blessing me. Just another reminder that things can be going really good with God. Can be going really terrible with the people around you. Mind if I could just paint the picture? So Isaac had to dig five wells, and this is what we've been preaching on. The first well Isaac had to dig was a well of faith. He, he was kicked out. He's in the valley now. He's in the wilderness, and he dug a well of faith. Isaac had to make a conscious decision to keep digging and keep sowing with faith alone. He had to keep digging and keep sowing even though he lost friends. He had to keep digging and keep sowing even though he was hurt. He had to keep digging and keep sowing even though he felt pain. He had to keep digging and keep sowing even though it didn't make sense. He had to keep digging and keep sowing just because God said so. Have you ever been in that place where like, listen, I, I'm just going to keep doing this. Just because God said so. He had to keep digging when everyone was like, hey, Isaac, this doesn't make sense. We need to go. We need to go to Egypt. No, 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 I'm going to keep digging. I'm going to keep sowing because God told us not to leave. He showed evidence. Oh, he said, you ever try to plead with people around you? Listen, he showed evidence that this is God. It's like, this is really God. This is God. It's really, did you see what he did? Bro, bro, it's over. Let's go. No, 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 I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to keep digging and I'm going to keep sowing. 
He had, that was a well of faith he had to dig. He had to dig beyond how he felt. He had to dig beyond what it looked like. He had to dig beyond the famine. He had to dig. It didn't make sense for him to dig in the middle of the desert. But he had to keep doing it. But he hid something in his heart that we talked about a couple weeks ago, Genesis 26 and 3. God said, if you stay in the land, I will bless you and I will be with you. So that's what he hid. He kept it right here. God said he's going to take care of us. I've been in a place like that where I've had, to, I might have been the only one who heard God. I'm like, well, listen, if you just, if you just, just, just hang in there with me. Nah, bro, I'm good. No, 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 this is really God I'm trying to tell you. You ever been there? So Isaac had to dig this well of faith. Then the second well we talked about last week was a well of perseverance. Dealing with difficult people. Your hand if you've dealt with difficult people. Raise your hand if you're sitting next to somebody that's difficult. I'm joking. Don't do that. <laughs> I wanted to lighten the mood because we're about to go somewhere. Isaac had to deal with the liars, the backstabbers, the betrayers, the ones who tried to cheat him out of a blessing, the prideful people, the jealous people, the ignorant people, the church folk, the family, the friends, the shady people, the petty people. The lack of support people. Isaac had to come to grips with the fact that he might be the only one who was hearing God at the moment. Isaac had to come, with the, come, come to grips with the fact that everyone may not understand what God is doing through him. Isaac had to decide, I'm going to keep digging. And I'm not going to let the people around me slow me down. I'm not going to let the people around me hinder what God is doing in my life because this is bigger than me. The plan of God over my life is bigger than me. It's not just about me, but it's everybody who I'm, who I'm connected with. Got to keep digging. And I got to keep showing. Isaac was saying, I'm not going to miss God in this hour. Pleasing God is more important than pleasing people. I'm going to say it again. Pleasing God is more important than pleasing people. Then he comes to a third well that he had to dig. This is not long, but this is, but I have to dig this out for you. Isaac had to dig a well of endurance. Isaac had to decide to not give up regardless of what the enemy threw at him. This was the well where Isaac realized that he ain't just fighting against people, but he's fighting against the enemy. That the enemy has an army that's against them. That the enemy has plans to steal, kill, and destroy what God is doing in his life. The enemy desires to pull him out of alignment. What does alignment mean? Alignment means that you're on the path God called you to be on. And you're walking it with God. And out of alignment means you decided to step off. The enemy can only, he can't push you, he can't push you off, he can only persuade you to make the decision. And Isaac had to realize that as he was on the path of God, the enemy was trying to persuade him to take another route. God said the enemy's trying to persuade some of you guys to step off the path today and to take another route. get out of alignment. But what happens is, if you get out of alignment, you miss God. The type of God we serve, here's what's crazy, and most people don't really understand this. The type of God we serve, he's very detailed. Very detailed. He says, listen, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to do it this way, and this is how it's going to be. I'm going to meet you 10 months down here. But I need you to meet me there at this time, at this appointed time. What the enemy is, knows is, once God says something in the spirit, everybody in the spirit hears it. So the enemy's like, oh, I just need to make sure you don't make it there at that time. I need to make sure you don't get there. So he's like, I got 10 months to throw you off. I got 10 months to, to just persuade you to decide to take this route. 
So what the enemy does is says, as you're on this path, the enemy's like, listen, you know that route's easier. I ain't listen to you. Yeah, it's, it's easier. Do you see all the drama you're about to deal with? You know what, that can't be God. He probably wants you to go this way. And eventually we like, all right, maybe you're right. The enemy comes shrouded as an angel of light, meaning he comes in a way that you, like a friend. Comes like a friend. He ain't forcing you to do nothing. He's just like, listen, I'm looking out for you. This route's better. You should take this route. Every day he's in your ear. You should take this route, take this route. Eventually, you slow down. You're like, you know what? You may be right. I'm going I'm to I'm at least go look over here. And the moment you look over here, that, that appointed time that you were waiting on just passed. And he's like, boom, I got him. I got, I got him. I got him. The enemy, the image I see in my head, the enemy is like, imagine you're in a car. The enemy comes like a friend. So the enemy sitting in your seat, sitting in your passenger seat. Holy Spirit's on the GPS. And God says, you, tells you, hey, I need you to go down this expressway. About 10 miles down the road, you're going to see a sign that you're on the right path, I need you to take that exit. Get in the car, you listen to the Holy Spirit, the enemy's like, ah, you can turn that down. I got it, I know the way. I know the way. I've been on, I've been on 75 North a lot of times, easy. I know exactly where we're going. The moment you get close to the exit, he tries to distract you. Hey bro, you see that, look at them trees over there. Those is nice. Man, have you ever seen a sunset like that? And you so focused looking this way, you didn't pass the exit. Or the enemy will tell you, listen, you ain't got to go this way. That's 10 miles. Get off right here. We'll be all right. Get off right here. I know a shortcut. God loves you. He'll take care of you. He's going to bless you anyway. Just take this way. It's a lot easier. Ugh. The enemy is one of the most conniving, sneaky people. But you got to see how it works. Well, the Bible says in Ephesians 6.12, I'm going to keep going. The Bible says in Ephesians 6.12, it says we fight not against humans. We're fighting against forces and authorities and against rulers of darkness and powers in the spiritual world. You're fighting against an enemy you can't see. And because you can't see him, most of us don't know we're fighting against them. There's a whole army against what God is trying to do in your life. Warring just for you to step off the path. You might say, I'm going to stay on the path. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm stay on the path. What the enemy would like to do is while you're walking this path with God, he's going to try to confuse you. He's going to make you question, is this path God? This God, God is this, do you really believe this is God? Why would God have you go through all that? You know what? Can't be God. It's probably not. It's probably not God. Maybe you didn't hear right. Plus, you know, you sent for anyway, so he probably ain't speaking how you think he's speaking. Maybe that wasn't God. Maybe that was you. This is probably something you want to do. It's not God. Maybe God is over there. As a friend, we should go this way. That's totally against how God moves. The Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians, for God is not the author of confusion. So the moment you start to experience confusion on your path with God, it's not God. That's the enemy. God says, I don't create confusion. I'm going to give you a clear direction. I'm going to give you clear instructions. They may not be all the ones that you want. I may give you more along the way. At, in the beginning, I may give you more along the way. It may, you may want more, but it's going to be clear. The moment it becomes confusing, know you warn against somebody else. Mm. Jesus. 
But then you got to keep in mind that God won't cause confusion because God already knows your story. Jeremiah says, before I was even born, God gave me a purpose and a plan, and the plan was for my good. Declares the Lord. So if the plan of God over my life was for my good, the moment the enemy start, the moment I start feeling confusion about this being a good thing, it's not God. That's the enemy in fourth confusion. You know if you follow God, you're going to have to deal with it. You know if you stay on the path of God, the, the church folk going to hurt you. You know if you stay on the path of God, you're going da-da-da-da-da. Just cause confusion. His goal, because he can't push you off the path, his goal is just to get you to decide not to go. If he can get you to slow down, he feel like he winning. Because if you slow down, eventually you'll stop. If you stop, eventually you'll turn around. Mm. I'm going to skip down. I'm going to skip down because we got to get out of here. The enemy uses four ways to attack you. Four ways to attack you. Take your notes out. I got a lot of scripture that I'm going to run through. You're not going to be able to slow down on it. You'll be able to watch it. But take your notes out. The enemy... He's very sneaky, and there's four ways that he tries to manipulate you to get off the path. Four. One, deception. He's a deceiver. One, deception. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Two, discouragement. Discouragement. One, deception. Two, discouragement. Three, division. Four, distraction. One, deception. Two, discouragement. Three, division. Four, distraction. They call him a deceiver because he lies. John 18, we're going to, here's the deceiver part. John 18, I mean John 8, 44. The Bible says the enemy is the father of lies. Meaning nothing out of his mouth is truth. He's never telling you the truth. It may sound good. It may feel good. It may look good. But it's never true. He may say, listen, listen, brother Tony, the grass is greener on the other side. And you pop up over there and it's astroturf. He's always lying. And the way that you combat this, and I'm going to jump through this, the way you can combat his lies is to know the truth. Mm. The way you combat his lies is to know the truth. Ephesians 6, 17 talks about how the, the word of God is the sword of the spirit, and it cuts through every lie of the enemy. Every lie. Watch this. The enemy says things like this. He says, you're alone. You ain't got nobody with you. You're going to always be alone. But then the Bible says in Isaiah 41, 10, God is with you. Deuteronomy 31, 6, God will never leave you. He will go with you wherever you go. Matthew 28, 20, God will be with you to the very end. See how that's the very opposite of what the enemy lies to you about. The enemy comes around and he says things like, you're weak. But then the Bible says, Proverbs 31, 25, you have all strength. All the strength you need because you're clothed in strength from the Lord. The enemy says, no, 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 no. You're weak. You're weak. Don't listen to God. You're weak. But then the Bible says in Exodus 15, God is strong and he gives you all his strength when you need it. Total opposites. Total opposites. The enemy likes to say things like you're a failure. You never win. You're a failure. You're not good enough. But then, the, but then the word of God comes around in 1 Corinthians and says, you're victorious through Jesus. 1 John 5, 4 says, you were created to win every time. Romans 8, 37, you are not a failure or a loser. You're more than a winner. You're more than a conqueror. See how that cuts through what the enemy says. Enemy says, you're broken. You're broken. You're a shattered shell. You've been through too much. But then Colossians 2, 9 through 10 says, you're complete in Christ. 
Psalm 23 says, you lack nothing. The enemy tells you you're broken. You got to know it's truth. The enemy likes to tell you, nobody's going to help you. You might as well get off the path now. Nobody's going to help you. Well, nobody's going to help you. You're going to do this all by yourself. But then the word of God says, Psalm 121, God is willing to help you every time you need him. Then the word of God comes around and says, in Psalm 46, when you are in trouble, God will be right there in your present situation. Meaning, it doesn't matter what's going on. God says, I'm willing to come and help you right there in your present time. But the enemy says, no, 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 no. No one's going to help you. But then the Bible says, God will always help you in Isaiah 41. The enemy likes to tell you, your sins are too big to forgive. You've done too much. You're unworthy. God, God doesn't want anything to do with you. Your sins are too great to forgive. But then the Bible says in Ephesians 1.7, God has forgiven you in all of your sins according to his grace. Nah, your sins are too big. Remember the thing that you did a couple years ago? You remember that? Yeah, God ain't forgave you of that. That was too big. But then Psalm says, God is always ready to forgive you from anything. Psalm 86. Psalm 103, God can and is willing to remove any sin and not hold it against you. Enemy says your past will define you. And God says, in Christ you're a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. The enemy says your past defines you. God says in Isaiah, God tells me to forget. Forget my past. The enemy says your past will define you. But then Ephesians says, you can live a life as a new creation in God and not be tied to your past. Oh, the word of God contradicts every lie the enemy can tell you. So he tries to deceive you. The enemy comes around. Then he tries to discourage you. Discouragement. The definition of discouragement is a deficit of courage. All he can do is to get you to have fear and doubt. He wants to discourage you from even starting the journey. He doesn't want you to win. All he wants you to do is he's just going to talk to you. Listen, you're not worthy enough to be on this path. Do you see what's coming? Fear. And then that fear diminishes all your courage. Causes you to retreat. The fear affects your ability to move forward. The enemy likes to lie to you and he'll say things like, you don't want to do this because this is going to happen. They're going to expose you. Everybody's going to find out about that thing if you keep going. Everyone's going to know about that secret sin you got. You should just stop now. You should just give up now. Why even get on the path? God doesn't care. Listen, listen. You, you done done too much. You might as well give up. Find something else to do. You'll never break that, that blessing. You'll never get there. Because you keep falling. You failed yesterday. Why would God even give you that? Discouragement. Discouragement. Discouragement is based off of getting you to fear what's coming. But then God says in 2 Timothy 1.7, God has not given you the spirit of fear. But of power, love, and a sound mind. So when you're following God and you don't experience power, love, and a sound mind, that means it's not God. If you're experiencing fear and doubt on doing the things of the Lord, it ain't God. It ain't God. Somebody's trying to get you not to do it. That's your sign that you're on the right path. The enemy doesn't want you to stay there. So all he can't push you off. All he can do is say, you should be worried about what's coming. Might as well go this way. This way's easier. That way you're going to be hurt. That way you're going to run into people who don't like you. That way you ain't going to find support. Over there you ain't going to find the resources. 
that's too big for you. You're, you're not great. Go over here and hang out with the people that's not great. See the lies? But then God says, I've, the plan I've given you is for your good and for hope and for future. God says, I'm excited about what I've called you to do. And I call you worthy enough to do it. All you have is all you need. And all you need is all you have. Can I give me just a couple moments to share a story with you and then we can end this. I fought one of the biggest battles I ever had to fight. When the elders asked me, did I want to be set man of this hour? Oh, there was a war in the battlefield of my mind. Enemy, oh, he was, he was ready. What? I'm not worthy enough to do that. You don't know enough. You're too young. You ain't been through enough. I'll never accept you. The moment, the moment you get uh, installed, they're leaving. Look at it. Where are your friends at? They never came. They ain't supported you. They ain't going to come with you. Nobody trusts you. Nobody believes you. You're just a hype man for Jesus. You don't really know nothing. That was, that's how the enemy was. Just I mean, every, I was losing sleep. When I was in the bathroom, this is what I was thinking about. In the shower, this is what I'm thinking about. While I'm driving, this is what I'm thinking about. It took me a whole year and a half to actually give him a yes. Even still, that was the most painful yes I had to give. All right. I think, and I, I even said, I think this is what God is saying. Discouragement. All he wants you to do is to not get on the path. And the moment I said yes, things start working out. I started seeing that, oh, wait a minute, this is actually what God actually called me to do. The moment I said yes, testimony started coming in. Man, God, man, I, man, I, when, when you preach the word of God, I've never heard it that way. I actually feel like I'm learning the Bible now. I started getting testimonies just because I gave one of the most uncomfortable yeses I've ever given in my life. The sacrificial yes. Mm. So don't let them discourage you. Last are really short. Division. He wants to just divide you. It's really simple. All he wants to do is divide you. He wants to keep you from people who will speak life into you. So the moment you're on the path of God and all of a sudden you start having issues with people, realize the enemy's at work. All he wants you to do is to not keep godly people around you. He doesn't want people to sharpen your iron. So he causes division. He causes arguments. You ever, you ever seen that happen? I'm in the will of God, but I can't seem to get along with people. It ain't the people. It ain't the people. It's the enemy. He just wants you to feel like you have no support. The Bible says a, a, a man alone is not good. All he wants to do is to isolate you. If I can isolate you, then it's just the devil. It's just me and you and your thoughts. There's nobody to speak well into you. If I can get you to stop going to church, now you don't have a community. Now you don't have people looking out for you. If I can get you to stop ministry, oh, now you're not encouraged every week. Now you're not digging on purpose. If I can get you to, to, to get issues with your family, see, now, now you don't have people that, that's really in your mix, that can really speak life into it, that can really see when you're you off. Because close people who are closer, they know when you're off. They, they, they know something wrong. Orlando's one of my closest friends. He knows there's something wrong. It, just by how I say things. I walk in, I'm just getting coffee, like, hey, bro, hey, bro what's up? What's up, bro? Whoa. You good, bro? What's up? He knows. And the enemy, what the enemy would do is try to keep people away from you. I can isolate you. There's nobody who can speak life. If I can isolate you from people who know the word and can rightly divide the word, then I got you all to myself. And all I'm going to do is just keep nagging. That's the enemy talking. I'm just going to keep nagging and nagging and nagging until you get off the path. Causes division. Last one. And we're good. Somebody say, we're, last one, we're good. No, if you give me that, just that time, because I wanted to huck and buck and shout and run around the church. <laughs> uh, 
Last one is he wants to distract you. Really easy. The Bible says in Galatians we're supposed to walk by the Spirit with God. What the enemy wants you to do, he wants to persuade you to look somewhere else. What it, some of the things he'll do, he'll keep you busy. You ever, you ever seen that? Well, 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 you can't go on that path because you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to go to work, you got to do this, you got to take your kids to this and that. And when you do that, you get done with that, you got to do this, you got to make sure you do this because you got to pay rent. And then you got to make sure you do this and blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, you've been so busy for three, four months and you never stepped on the path of God. Enemies like, got him, got him. Just kept you busy. He calls you to worry. Get you to worry about things that aren't important. Distraction. Distraction, he distracts you with greed. This path, you ain't making enough money on that path. But that path, if you, if you take this path, you get more money. You get everything you want. That path, you know, a, lot of, a lot of people in the Bible was living on the street. That's how the enemy lies. He just creates these lies. And you forget that the Bible says you'll have life and that life more abundantly. He just wants to distract you. Get you to look somewhere else. He'll distract you with pride. He'll say, hey, you know better than God, I'm telling you. You know what's better. You've been down this path before. Listen, you already know the route. You could take that. You don't need nobody else. You can do it on your own. Distracted. This path feels better, don't it? My whole testimony with the church, that was what God, that's what the enemy was doing in my brain. He said, listen, there's some other paths that are way better than, than being a pastor of a church. I'm like, what? He said, remember, remember that church offered you 80 grand to be their worship pastor? All you had to do was go to rehearsal on Thursday and then sing on Sunday? 80 grand. I bet that 80 grand's still there. Go ahead and give him a call. That would be a lot easier than this. They ain't about to pay you 80 grand. They willing to. Why don't, you, why don't you just go over there? They like you anyway. They always invite you in. I, I guarantee you, if you just make a call, they, they'll, they'll answer. He said, Troy, remember the, time, remember the time when you went to Nashville and everybody wanted you to move there because they wanted you to write with all these great artists and all the people that you were supposed to write with. Now they got Grammys and all that. Bro, that could have been you. I bet they'll let you into their circle if you just go. Go ahead to call the elders, tell them no. Pick up your stuff. Y'all can just move to Nashville. Bro, you know everybody there. You're right. They love what you do. I bet that, I bet that opportunity is still there. See that? Pride, greed. He's just trying to feed into it. All just to get you distracted. The moment I, watch this, the moment I said no, I'm going to give my uncomfortable yes to the elders. And you know, I said no to the devil. Then all of a sudden people start calling me. Hey, bro, can you write this song and just email it to me? Can you do this for me? God started making a way and I realized, like, dang, I don't have to move. They seek, they'll seek you out if they really want you. You won't miss nothing. The enemy just wants you to feel like you, there's a fear of missing out. If I don't take this opportunity, I'm going to miss out. God's like, no, I'm going to give you everything. That's, that's, that's my permissive will, but this is my perfect will. Stay to your feet. Stay to your feet. Mm. And we went a little longer. God moved a mighty way. Look at Brother Ennis on the keys. The enemy, the well Isaac had to dig was a well of endurance where he had to fight the enemy. He had to dig past every attack of the enemy. The enemy wanted to deceive him, cause discouragement, division, and distraction. And that's what he's trying to do in your life today. All four of those things can happen and you don't even notice it. He doesn't want you to be distracted. God doesn't want you to be distracted. God doesn't want you to be discouraged. God doesn't want you to be deceived. God wants you to be amongst believers. I believe we've shifted to a moment where I'm just going to give this opportunity. Close your eyes. Here's your chance to just talk to the Lord.
God, I'm willing to get back on the path. If I stepped off, God, show me how to get back in the path. God says it's not too late. It's not too late for you. If you went the wrong way, if you went the wrong way, God says, here, just go ahead and hit a U-turn. Here we go. I'm waiting for you. So talk to the Lord right here. Don't let me talk to him for you. God, I want to get back. I want to make sure I'm on the path. I want to make sure I'm following you. One thing I learned as you're talking to the Lord, one thing I learned about how to overcome all the ways the enemy attacks is to stay close to the shepherd. Stay close to the shepherd. Because he calls you to walk with him. So when you stay close to the shepherd, when the enemy says something to you, like, God, is that you? Okay, you ain't say that? Cool. But what do you want me to do now? You see that coming? Yeah, God, oh, uh, how you want me to step over? Left foot first, right foot? I don't know. How you want to do it? You stay close to the shepherd. Stay close to the shepherd. Keep your hands up. Talk to the Lord. God, I want to be on the path. Really easy. You can say, God, I want to start over right here, right now. I want to start over. Make a conscious effort. God, I'm starting over. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. He'll make the path real clear. He'll show you the right way to go if you put him first. I'm going to shout to the Lord, God, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us here at The Well. We pray that you were really able to encounter love, experience freedom, and were inspired to truly, truly live on purpose as God has designed a destiny for each of us. God bless you. Thank you so much. And remember, here at The Well, we love you. We love you. Transformation is real. And there's plenty of room just for you. Have a blessed day.